Hi, my name is Ayo Emmanuel Affair from the Department of Accounting. I'm talking on the topic business communication skills and strategy. And under that, I'll be talking on verbal and non verbal communication. Introduction what is verbal communication? In the modern business world, there's a process of sharing information between people in a workplace and also outside the workplace. So for this, this information to be shared accurately and precisely, there has to be, there has to be communication between members, between employees and members of the organization. Uh, so, effective business communication is how employees and management interact to which organization goals. Its purpose is to improve organization process and reduce errors. It is important to work on both your communication skills and communication process to achieve effective business communication. This, and this communication comes in two forms, as is my topic. So, the word baba comes from... The word baba means connected with the use of words. Any communication using, using words is known as verbal communication. Yeah, the center gives words the feeling, thoughts, and ideas, and express the form of species, discussions, presentations, and conversations as I'm doing right now. Under verbal communication, there are two types of communication, which is oral and non-oral communication. Oral communication, as the name suggests, involves the use of spoken words to convey message, as I'm doing right now. Words should be chosen very carefully so, so that they connote the precise shade of meaning. Listening is also an important aspect of Oral communication. Second part of communication is written communication. A message constitutes written communication when it is put in black and white, that is written form, both in soft copy and hard copy. Technological advancement has enlarged the scale of written communication through email and all such and other such facilities. Second type of communication is non-verbal communication. And non-verbal communication is the process of conveying meaning without the use of words, either written or spoken. Non-verbal communication involves messages that are spread by other means other than language or Written or written words such as proper eye contact, positive tone of voice, personal appearance, good posture, etc. Mm -hmm. That uh, I'll be handing over to my co person Teresa to talk on the importance of non verbal communication. Good morning, guys. My name is Ike Berenwe Esosa, and I'll be speaking on the topic business communication skills and strategy. And under that topic, I'll be taking a subtopic which is the importance of verbal and non verbal communication. Is a key part of getting through life be it to universities, schools, or socially. So developing strong skills in this area is very crucial. There are several ways individuals communicate, but they are majorly categorized into verbal and non-verbal communication. Importance of verbal communication is a very good verbal communication helps to improve relationship in school, between people, and in your social life. It helps to reduce conflict. The the situation of conflict tends to reduce when objectives are communicated verbally and it helps to build trust. When you communicate properly, it helps to build trust because people tend to understand you better. It helps to increase the engagement and productivity in the society. When people communicate verbally, they tend to communicate, they tend to understand what they're about to do and what they want to do. The importance of non-verbal communication uh, to, it plays a significant role in our lives as it can improve a person's ability to relate and engage, establish meaningful interaction in everyday life. Non-verbal communication is about body language and in such position it tends to do with eyes, posture and body movement. Non-verbal communication is often instinctive. A person might say one thing but the body language might mean another thing and verbal communication relieves a person through feeling towards a particular idea or a topic especially through facial expression and body movement thank you hi my name is stephanie amade and i am the group leader of group 19 talking on the topic business communication skills and strategies and the topic for me today is listening i'm going to describe the concept of listening its importance its barriers and all of that first of all let's talk about listening what exactly is listening according to the oxford dictionary listening means to take notice of an act or what someone says respond to advice or a request or make an effort to hear something be alert and ready to hear something now what is listening as a tool in communication people communicate with words expressions and even in silence and your attention to them will make you a better communicator listening to others commonly con consumes more of business employees time than reading writing and speaking combined 
it is likely the most important communication skill and an important social tool. Listening skills depend on the ability to receive and decode both verbal and non-verbal messages. This concerns an individual's perception and how capable they are of discerning the true intent of an individual's communication. What is the importance of listening? Are you listening to me? This question is often asked because the speaker thinks the listener is nodding off or daydreaming. We sometimes think that listening means we only have to sit back, stay barely awake, and let a speaker's word watch over, watch over us. While many Americans look upon being active as something to admire, to engage in, and to excel at, listening is often understood as a passive activity. You may have heard the adage, we have two ears but only one mouth. An easy way to remember that listening can be twice as important as talking. As a student, you most likely spend many hours in a classroom doing a large amount of focused listening. Yet, sometimes it is difficult to apply those efforts of communication in other areas of your life. As a result, your listening skills may not be all they could be. Lots of people are good at talking, but when it comes to listening, when it's time to hear the thoughts of others, the feelings of someone else, they fall short. And there are so many reasons why listening is important, but for the sake of this presentation, I will mention just a few. Some importance of listening could include trust. Listening builds trust. When you make an effort to listen to what someone says to you, they recognize that you are interested in their thoughts and their opinions. And that helps them to see you are invested in what you or they are saying. This makes them more comfortable with sharing things with you and being open, which leads to trust. Another importance of listening is it reduces misunderstandings. Misunderstandings are one of the most common effects of poor communication. Someone says something, but probably because you were not listening, you misunderstood what they said, you take offense, those kind of things. When people aren't listening to each other, it's very easy to mishear something or misinterpret someone's meaning. Many times, understandings aren't a big, big deal, but some can have major consequences. Example, if someone is not listening when their friend explains they have a certain food allergy, serving them food with that dangerous dish can be life-threatening to them. Another important reason of listening is it helps eliminate conflicts. Poor listening skills are at the root of a lot of conflicts. Besides, sometimes causing misunderstandings. Not listening well frustrates people engaged in important conversations. When everyone feels calm and safe, it's much easier to walk through tense situations without things escalating to conflicts. Listening improves your business relationships and productivity. If your career involves interacting with others, you know how vital good communication is. But without listening, communication is not complete. So understanding and conflicts can derail projects and com end companies' bad reputations. Whether you're at work or in school, listening is very important to your success. People who are good listeners are more likely to retain information in class from their bosses, understand what's being required of them, and ask the right questions. Listening also improves your leadership skills as a leader. You can understand what your followers want, what they need, and dissect the information from their different perspectives only if you listen to them. Now we've discussed some importance of listening and there are processes involved when it comes to listening. We have five stages involved when it comes to listening. The receiving, understanding, evaluating, remembering and responding stages. Effectively engaging in all these five stages of the listening process helps us best gather the information we need from the world around us. The receiving stage is the first stage of the process which involves the hearing and attending. Hearing is the physiological process of registering sound waves as they hit the edge eardrum. Paired with hearing, attending is the other half of the receiving stage in the listening process. The understanding stage is the second stage. Understanding or comprehension occurs when both the speaker and the audience share an experience of meaning 
and constitutes the first step in the listening process. After you firstly receive, hear and attend to information, you try to understand what the person has said to you. Then we go to the evaluation stage. Evaluating allows the listener to form an opinion of what they heard and if necessary to begin developing a response response when it comes to the evaluation stage it depends on the person we evaluate an information given to us based off of our own thought processes and how we think after the evaluation stage we go to the remembering stage the remembering stage occurs as the audience categorizes and retains the information they've gathered from the speaker for future access, whereby they look back or in the future, they look back at what the person said before. Example, in a class, an lecturer teaches you something. After the class, maybe you have a test and you didn't read that particular part. If you have a good memory, you could try to remember what was said. If you listened attentively in class, you can try to remember what was said. Remembering previous information is very critical to moving forward. And lastly, we have the responding stage. The responding stage is the stage of listening process where the listener provides both verbal and non-verbal response. Now, the reactions could be non-verbal in terms of body gestures, nodding, making eye contact, cocking their head, rolling their eyes. It could be involuntary and unconscious as well. The verbal response could be what they say, their response to what was said to them verbally by their voice and their speech. In short, active listening is crucial for establishing our ethos. Now, let's briefly talk on listening skills and the barriers to listening. Some listening skills include, or there are several types of listening that you can develop both at home and at work. We have seven types, and I want to very briefly touch on each of the types of listening. The first types of listening skill is the informational listening. When you learn something, you want to use the informational listening to understand and retain information. Another type of listening is the discriminative listening. It's the first type of listening that you're born with. That is almost like the non-verbal reaction that I talk about, where you don't only rely on your words, you use body language like you roll your eyes when someone says something that you're not content with, you're not, so it doesn't flow with you, you roll your eyes or you nod your head or your tone of voice changes. Those are discriminative listening. It's very involuntary and we do not deliberately do it. So listening skills are informational, discriminative, bias, bias listening. Bias listening is selective. When someone who uses bias listening only listens to the information they want to hear, that is what bias listening is about. And it can lead to a distortion of facts because the person listening is not fully in tune with what the speaker is saying. We have the sympathetic listening, which is driven by emotion. Instead of just listening to the message through with the words, you are paying attention to the feelings and the emotions of the speaker. And then we have the empathetic listening. The empathetic listening is similar to the sympathetic listening, but the difference is in the sympathetic listening, the person only tries to understand what the person parts the other party feels. Empathetic listening, the person puts themselves in the other person's shoes to feel like they are the ones in that position or in that situation when they are listening to them. Then lastly, critical, critical listening. We listen and use that skill to analyze complex information. Using critical thinking while listening goes deeper than comprehensive listening. Instead of taking the information at face value, you can listen to it critically and evaluate it. Now, lastly, let's talk about the barriers to listening. What is a barrier? A barrier is anything that gets in the way of clear information. We have physical barrier, which is a sound, a noise, with the sounds from the sky. Probably if you're watching this video, you can hear like the wind or maybe people walk up and down. That is a physical barrier to listening because it could affect how the person watching this video could hear me audibly. I hope not. Secondly, <laughs> physiological barriers. Physiological barriers could be 
when the listener suffers from ill health, fatigue, sleeplessness, and the likes. Psychological barriers could be the speaker speaks very rapidly or with an accent that is not clear or the receiver doesn't focus on what the person is saying and lets their mind wander. Another barrier is ego, thinking that your own ideas are more important than the other person or you are always right, the other person is wrong. Listening requires an open mind and heart, free from negative emotions. But if the mind is close to the other person's message, there will be no listening, which is why ego is a very, very bad trait when it comes to listening. Other barriers could include overload of message, poor retention, selective and limited perceptions. Pro tip, there are certain rules when it comes to listening that could help you be a good listener. One of it is to stop talking, stop thinking, remove distractions. Do not let your mind wander. Do not prejudge. Be patient, empathize with the speaker and take notes. Thanks for listening. Bye. So I'll be passing it over to the next group who is going to talk about the concept of reading and how to understand it. Thank you. My name is Odua Solina and I'm here to talk about the concept of reading. Reading involves the ability to comprehend various types of documents, including emails, memos, reports, proposals, contracts, and other forms of written communication. It enables individuals to understand and interpret written messages that are critical for effective communication in the workplace. Reading is a critical component of business communication, as it allows individuals to gain information and insight necessary for making informed decisions. My name is Odewoli Olaemi Oruluwa. I'm representing accounting year two. I'll be talking on the four key elements of effective reading. Number one, we have comprehension, we have um, active reading, active engagement, we have speed, and we have note taking. On comprehension, it involves the understanding and the interpreting of written information accurately. It also involves the um, um, identifying of basic information that is um, the key ideas, the key notes, the supporting points of a text. And number two, we have the speed. Reading speed, it involves the it involves the rate at which an individual can read and process information accurately. It is a very vital aspect of business uh, communication as professionals tend to read large volume of text accurately and efficiently within a short period of time. So number three, we are talking about I'm talking about active engagement. Active reading involves actively engaging in in text, questioning and um, evaluating of the text that the information presented. So um, I'll be talking lastly on note taking. Note taking is a very crucial part in um, reading because it helps the individual to take note of points, vital points, and also help the individual to organize their thoughts in one place so they can um, identify the areas that need more questioning and more um, consideration. In addition to what my partner said, effective reading in business communication is essential for success as it enables individuals to stay informed, make informed decisions, and communicate effectively with others. It is a skill that can develop through practice and individual can improve reading comprehension. Hello, my name is Kazi Momotara. I'm a representative of accounting department and I'm going to be talking on the topic business communication skills and strategies. And under that topic, I'll be picking up the subtopic speaking. I'm talking on, on the definition of speaking and the purpose of speaking. So what is speaking? Speaking is an interactive process of constructing meaning that involves producing, receiving, processing information. Speaking is often spontaneous, open-ended, and evolving. Speaking can also be defined as a language skill or means of communication in which people can express their ideas and information to others in spoken forms. As I am, as I am here right now, I'm speaking to you. So this is a form of expressing myself in spoken form. Okay, so what are the purposes of speaking? To inform. First, the purpose of speech is to inform the listener. The activity of speaking imparts information, awareness, and understanding to the listener. Secondly, it convinces. The second purpose of speech is that it convinces and persuades our listener to accept our viewpoints. Number three, to stimulate. 
This has to do with stimulating others to perform other important actions. Through our words, through our speech, we are able to stimulate others to perform actions. Th fourthly, to entertain. To entertain is to amuse others in a pleasant manner. We amuse and entertain our audience with jokes or humorous remarks while we talk. Lastly, to console. Speech can be used as an effective tool to console the people who suffer some loss or mystery. Through our speech, we can be able to console people who are going through a lot or people that are, are in their down times. Thank you very much. Okay, so under this topic, we also have speaking skills and elements of speaking skills. So I'll be handing over to my partner, Ayodele, to be telling us more about it. Thank you. I am Laura Oshrai by Ayodele, and I'm here to talk about speaking skills and its elements. Speaking skills can be defined as a skill that enables us to communicate effectively and they give us the ability to convey information verbally in a way in which our in listeners will understand. The elements of speaking skills are vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation and fluency. Vocabulary has to do with the total number of words particular language. The more you read, the more your vocabulary improves. Then for the grammar, the system of rules and principles for speaking a language. Then we have pronunciation, the formal or informal way in which a word is made to sound when spoken. And we have the last one, which is fluency. This is about how comfortable and confident one is in speaking. It's also about showing a clear connection between each point that you are trying to make. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Adeleke Esther, and I'm here to give an explanation on business and communication skills and strategies, mainly on the written the definition of writing and the essentials of writing. Writing is is the act of is the act and process of producing or recording words to a form that can be read and understood. It is a basic framework for our communication, and it is used to convey meaning. Therefore, business writing is the process is a type of communication that is used in a professional setting. Effective communication in business entails understanding the purpose of the message. It also entails identifying the target audience and choosing the appropriate tone and style for the communication. It is a powerful piece of writing that helps to convey meaning to the readers in a clear, concise and effective manner. And writing in business communication is necessary to be presented in a logical and structured in a way that is easy to read, in a way that the content is easy to read and be understood by the readers. Mm -hmm. There are various forms of writing in business communications and they include emails, memos, reports, job descriptions, press releases, bulletins, and so on. Explaining the meaning of email. Email is used to um, pass informal messages within the organization. Memo is used to pass information within the, organ within the organization quickly. And reports are used to give detailed information about a particular topic or project. Writing a business communication is a is an important component of business because it, it contributes to the success and growth of an organization. And the following are the reasons why writing is important in a business. One, clarity and precision. If business writing is done correctly, things like concise messages, absence of jargons and clear objectives that can be formulated clearly. Clear writing in business is used to convey or is used to pass intended message effectively, especially in a professional setting. The only reason why writing is important in business communication is professionalism. Um, proper business writing helps it helps to take out emotions and states and it helps to state um, the um, business issues clearly without without being sarcastic and being professional. It involves careful choice of words, the organization in a correct and sentence formulation as well as cohesive composition of sentences. Three, efficiency. Writing can help gain access to communication and makes business process more efficient. This can be done by using bulletins, bulletin points to summarize important information. The fourth reason why in business, writing is important in business communication is that it helps to organize the organizational members' thoughts so they can be more strategic 
and structure it on how to go forward with any information. Five, writing a business communication helps in laying down appropriate principles, policies, and rules for running the organization. Efficient, an efficient written communication can help to develop and enhance the image of an, of, of an organization. Therefore, in the final analysis, business writing and business communication is a very critical aspect of effective communication in an organization. This is because it's, it's crucial for establishing relationships making decisions and achieving the goals of organization. Thank you. So my partner is going to give the essentials of writing. So I'm going to leave it to Balikis to explain. My name is Semi Balikis. I'll be representing Group 90. And we are here to talk about business communication skills and strategies. My part which is um, qualities of good writing. What is good writing? Good writing is an, this is not an easy question to ask. This is because there are various, there are various or different, different considerations about good writing, which have different meanings. Then, qualities of good writing: there is focus, coherence, development, unity, correctness. What is focus? Focus. This this means that the, the information on each paragraph should entail a single, clear, and brief passage. Then we have, with, with good examples or detailed examples, we have coherence. This means that every paragraph must contain a logically and smooth flow and have a smooth flow together. Then we have um, unity. Unity this is saying that the, the paragraph or, info, or each information should contain a single and clear detailed information about what the recipient or about what the writer is trying to say then we have correctness this means that the the information on each paragraph should contain a good a good a good standard english that is error free yeah and lastly development this means each paragraph should have a center support of the information that is it should contain it should be well explained and contain descriptions and, and examples of what the right of what the writer is trying to talk about thank you hi this is group 19 presenting for fba 220 business communication skills and strategies i hope you enjoy it bye, bye.